Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. So as you can gather from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about how I got my literary agent. This is just, it's, let's just take a minute to bask in the fact that I can say this. It's a fairly straightforward path. I mean, it took one QWERTY letter, so do not fear, there's still some drama that I can share in this video. So in 2021, in the spring, I was long listed for the CBC Short Story Prize. An agent ended up reaching out to me from there. Now, some of you may be going, chillin', if an agent reaches out to you first, that is a scam. That can be a sign that an agent is a scam if they reach out to you first. In Canada, it's actually pretty normal to get an agent by being scouted from a magazine or a literary prize. If an agent does reach out to you under said circumstances, uh, the important thing is to vet them. And this agent, I didn't know the agent specifically, but I hadn't really been doing research on agents, so I wouldn't have really recognized many agents. But I did recognize the agency. Like, this was a very established, one of the most established agencies in the country. Another agent from this agency had like guest spoken in one of my classes in university. I have a conversation with this agent over email and they have some very nice things to say about my published short stories and really like my writing style. And their main question for me was, do you write novels? And I was like, I do. I had like looked at this agent's manuscript wish list and I really did feel like from what they were interested in, like they could be a really good fit. I basically just like very quickly pitched my two novels that I'm working on. So basically they were like, those all sound like things I would be interested in. Basically, uh, the next step would just be to like, send me a manuscript when you have one completed. But basically they said they were like, I will probably want to sign you. So it kind of just felt like finishing the manuscript and sending it to them was kind of a formality. Like, okay, like they're not gonna, they gotta make sure my novel isn't garbage. But I felt confident that my novel was good. And so I was like, I can, this is happening. Like I can do this. However, I wasn't done editing the book and had said that I would send it to them once I was finished revising it. Now, from this point onwards, I jumped the gun a little and basically interpret this whole interaction as I basically have an agent now. I basically, interpret this as I essentially have an agent because all signs had pointed towards this. Like they basically said, love your writing style. This project sounds up my alley. I will very much probably give you an offer. So I then foolishly go about my life for the next nine or 10 months. I basically being like, I basically have an agent. Like that's basically how I felt. I basically was like, I essentially have an agent. All I have to do is finish editing this book, send it to them, wham, bam, done that I have an agent. Like it was, I I got a little ahead of myself, but again, I felt so confident because that is what every interaction I'd had with this agent had pointed towards. So I finished editing the book. I emailed the agent and I was like, hey, if you're still interested, I finished the manuscript. They were like, oh my God, this is super exciting. Yes, of course, I sent it to them. They're like, I'm a little behind on queries. So it might take me a little while to get to. I have no idea what that time frame kind of involves. So I just kind of sit back and go about my life. This was around mid end of January. I don't remember exactly. I actually end up just through like a string of mutual connections, end up getting in contact with someone who's also represented by this agent, which was very much a coincidence, but I was able to talk to an author this agent represents who was super, super lovely. Said really good things about this agent and really could recommend them highly, but also did say a few things about their editorial and like communication style that I didn't think would really have been a good fit for me, to be honest. A again, not that they're bad practices, but just didn't seem like they fit well for me. Like the main thing was when I asked about their editorial process, the author that I was talking to had said that their main focus was kind of edits based on market. Like how do we make this more marketable? And I was like, like, I don't mean to be like, je suis an artiste who doesn't care about the market. Um, every once in a while my French immersion just comes out full force. To be honest, it's not <laughs> what I tailor my books around. Um, like I want to make an edit because it's making the book better, not because it's making the book easier to sell, you know? Ironically though, had the agent given me an offer, I probably still would have taken it. I think I would have felt like I have to, like how could you turn down such an opportunity? I think I probably would have taken the offer and it would have been not the right fit. The very next day, I hear back from this agent. It's a decently long email and it starts off like, they say that they had a chance to look at my manuscript, that they finally had a chance to look at my manuscript. They start off by saying some nice things about it. And then they start going into some 
some notes and it was essentially a revise and resubmit where they're basically like I would like to see a later draft they kind of talked to me like as if the book was in an early phase of development and I was like does it read like it's in an early phase of development because this is a draft nine and I've been working on this for three years <laughs> and I started reading their notes and they were just so out of left field like I didn't even know what to say like I I was just stunned my family literally thought it was more likely that the agent had mixed up the book with another person's book and was giving feedback on another person's book by accident as the author who's never really been in the industry and you're not used to working with industry professionals at this level you you don't really feel like you can reject notes like that even if on a gut level you know this is a not this these are wild notes and the notes were pretty the way they were delivered to me felt a little patronizing i kind of felt like i was being talked to as if i was a beginner they were very vague but also huge it was like restructure your whole book but no specifics really um they told me to restructure it with save the cat and i was like I just felt like they wanted it to be much more commercial. I'm not a commercial writer, like I write literary fiction, I have never said otherwise. And the funny thing about Honey Vinegar is that like, like it's literary fiction, but I would say that as literary fiction goes, it's fairly commercial. Like there's a lot of literary fiction that's just like a guy wandering around thinking and it's super cerebral. Honey Vinegar is a pretty commercial literary fiction book, like there's a really distinct high intensity plot. And so being told, basically that it still had to be more commercial. I was like, mm. so I remember immediately texting my critique, my friend critique partner who has read the book. And I was like, so I heard back from the agent and she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I was like, it's not good. And she was like, what, what is it? And I just showed her the email and she was like, okay, this is super weird. And I don't agree with these criticisms. And we kind of talked them through because you know, my first gut reaction to getting that email wasn't, these are, this was a bad reading, which I, I can confidently say that it was a bad reading now because like, I don't even think that this agent read much of the book, to be honest. Like they told me to restructure essentially the whole book, but from the context of the email, they didn't really say how much they'd read and they implied they'd only read it, started reading it that day. So I don't believe they really read that much of it anyways. And the things that they said about it just, were very out of left field and contradict everything that I concretely know to be true about this book. My first gut reaction was, oh my god, are these actually problems that I've never been aware of? Like, does my book actually have these huge integral problems that need a massive edit? And this edit that was being asked for was like, this is months of work. I don't know, I could even fathom how I would do these edits. But of course, when you get that email, you're like, you immediately think, at least for me, that these these edits must be necessary. So we talked through them. That helped me kind of cool down. And then I talked it through with my roommate who's also read the book and given feedback. And they also had the same, oh my God, what reaction. It became very clear, like this was just not a good fit. You know, nothing against this agent. I'm sure they do really good work. And um, I really admired a lot about them, but I just think, you know, they had reached out to me, maybe expecting something a little different from my wor work. And my work ended up not being what they wanted. So from there, I kind of have a little bit of a breakdown. I have never dealt with a rejection worse in my life because it had felt like a sure thing. It had felt like getting something that I, I was certain was gonna happen pulled out from under me. And it felt like a huge setback. It was like, oh, now I have to go start coordinating agents and that's gonna take forever and it's gonna be so hard. Oh my God, there's still that thought in the back of my mind. Maybe, maybe I do have huge issues with this book. Maybe I do have to do these massive edits. So I'm, I'm very much, you know, in the depths of woe about it. And um, I remember saying one other little detail. So I had obviously when this agent first reached out to me, like looked at their manuscript wish list and all seemed Gucci in terms of my my books. But after I'd sent in the book, um, I don't know why I do this to myself. I'd looked at their manuscript wish list again and they'd added a bit that they weren't saying that they weren't interested in any books with like pandemic or virus or plague themes. And my book does have a plague in it. You know, it's not the main plot point. Uh, it's not a big part of the book. It's just a teensy little plague. 
but it's there and you kind of can't unsee it. I was really worried about that because you know this is what I do. This is my personal skill in life, something I'm very good at. I will be in a situation, have an opportunity where everything is good and I will still find one little thing to fixate on and become extremely anxious about. I'm really good at doing this. I can do it in like even the most ideal of situations. It's really amazing. I'm like the world's leading expert on finding something to stress over in an otherwise great situation and just freaking out about it. I remember saying like literally in these words, I feel so stupid. I spent so much time worrying that the book might not be a good fit that I didn't even stop to think that the book might just not be good enough. So anyways, I think I just took a bit of time off. I didn't really think about it for a couple weeks. Eventually I was like, okay, I have to pick myself up with a floor and just make take a step forward to start querying some other agents like it's fine oh and i also remember saying like to my friend i was like yeah i feel dumb because like i haven't even thought of a plan b like i haven't been researching agents i don't have a query letter i have zero plan because i was so sure that this was gonna pan out and i shouldn't have been so sure that it would pan out but you know I, I call me naive but i was and it ended up not so then i start researching some agents and i'm like man it's rough out there. Not many people are open to queries. First, I just went through every single major literary agency, well, just every single literary agency in Canada, went through the list of agents and identified the ones that I thought would be the best fit because that felt like an easy way to just get a general overview of every agent in the country. A lot were not even open to queries or were only open to queries via referral. And I was like, how does, the other way that I looked for agents was just by going through similar work that I've read and looking at who the agents were. Really, it was just like the same two agents who kept coming up over and over and over again. One was not open to queries. One was from like a pretty fancy, pantsy agency in the US. I do some research on agents and I honestly come up pretty short. Like my list, my preliminary list of agents to query was like eight agents. And like most of them, there were several question marks where I was like not really clear on a lot of the details here. I remember also I spent like a day doing this and I was, I again, have another little, a little breakdown very preemptively. Like I started having a breakdown about how hard querying is before even sending a query letter. Like my Lord. But part of why I felt so low about it is because I was struggling to even find like many agents who I would be able to query. And also because I don't know, all I see on Twitter when I make the mistake of going on Twitter is just people talking about how hard it is for querying authors and how it's the worst it's ever been and how it's so rough out there and it's so bad. And I don't know, again, I have another little, I have another little breakdown that clearly a running theme through this video is me really jumping the gun on both celebration and breakdown <laughs> but I have one little day where I'm just like feeling really low about it because I just feel like I don't feel good about my chances based on everything that I'm being told about the market and everything let's just take a quick pause here just quick quick pause this is the do as I say not as I do portion of the video there's a lot of information out there on like querying strategy and stuff like that. And I would definitely recommend that if you're going to the query trenches that you do research on that kind of stuff. I think it can be really valuable. I didn't really for a couple reasons. I think the main reason why you have this like querying strategy, you know, where you start by querying some agents that are not your top picks, see if you get requests to see if your pages and your query is good. I didn't do any of that for two reasons. One, there were so few agents that I even felt like I, at this stage, had the option to query. That I was like, I don't really see the point of sending like test ones because who am I testing with? Someone who's a viable option, like, you know? And the other reason, and this will sound very arrogant, but to be honest, I just knew my query and pages were good. Like, I'm just gonna be totally honest, I knew it was good. Uh, I've had this book workshopped so extensively like, from the very first time that it was read uh, in, in a university workshop, my prof was like, this reads like a published book, you could publish this. Like, I knew it was good. I've been so fortunate to work with a lot of really great people from profs, friends, to get feedback on the book. 
I also knew that I had a very good pitch for the book, had a concept that I think really stands out in its genre while also being firmly rooted in the genre. I knew that I had a good query letter, that I had a good query letter with a really strong picture for the book. For years I figured I'd do, I figured before I queried a book I would get a professional query letter review, but when the time came I was like, I really don't need this. Like, this is, I just know this query letter is good, like, I'm gonna be straight up with you. Um, and I knew the opening pages were good, I'll be straight up with you. Maybe it sounds arrogant, but I was pretty confident in my pitch. My query letter came together very fast. I didn't really have to write my query letter in the moment. I kind of could just sit down and assemble it. I already had a pitch for the book written that I'd been tweaking and fine tuning for years, starting back when I had to submit a summary of it to my university workshop and I'd been solely tweaking it and refining it for years. So I had a short, good, punchy pitch for the book and I already have a bio written. So it was really just a matter of assembling it in a query letter format and tweaking it to to fit that format. I was able to pull together my query letter super fast just because I already had all the pieces already written. Again, if you are starting from square one, it's probably a document you want to spend a lot of time on. It is a really important thing, but I, I kind of just already had the pieces already there. I assemble my query letter and I decide to just start out by just querying a couple agents. Um, I figured that I would query a few today, a few the next day. So I end up starting by just querying two agents. The first was that really fancy schmancy agent who represent like half of my bookshelf and I really didn't think anything would come of that. They say on their website they're like that they don't even reply to queries unless they're interested so I figured that they would just ghost me forever. Spoiler alert, they ended up just ghosting me forever so they lived up to every promise and potential there. Uh, the other agent that I queried was Rachel Latofsky from Cook McDermott. When I was doing my research on agents, Rachel had really stood out to me to be honest as my top pick. Like a lot of the agents that I had looked at on the list, I had a lot of question marks about them. I was like, I need to further research this agent, not really clear on exactly what they want. With Rachel, I just felt like very clearly from reading her bio, I was like, seems like a really good fit. I just, I had, I don't know, there was a sentence intuitively and also based on what she was saying about what she was interested in, what she represented, that she would be a good fit. So I ended up querying her as well as this other agent. And the reason I query her first, even though I know not what you're supposed to do to query like your top pick agent first, just because I felt like the other agents, I needed a lot more, I needed to do more research on them. I was able to query her right away and was also like my top pick. So I send those two, I figure that I'm gonna query a couple more tomorrow, maybe a couple more the next day. But I end up hearing back from Rachel like an hour later, saying that she really liked what she'd seen in my query and that uh, she was interested in the full manuscript and that she could get back to me with two weeks if I gave her a two week exclusive reading period, which no one else had the book. So of course I was like, yes. This time I try not to get my hopes up, you know, because the first time I got my hopes up, it had fallen through. Two weeks later, just going through my notification before my meeting that morning. And as I'm just like checking my notifications, I get the email from Rachel, basically saying that she loved my book, that she wanted to set up a time to talk, potentially tomorrow. Um, so we set up a time to talk the next day. Remember like that afternoon, like after I was done work doing research on like what to say during the call and I was so overwhelmed by how many questions there were. And I was like, oh my God. I, I remember the next day it was like sick like in the morning and I'd accidentally said that I would uh, be home for the landlord to come by to fix the sink. And I was like asking my roommate, I was like, wait, can you please be home for the landlord? I accidentally like double booked myself for the most important call in my career. I think doing all the research on what to ask during the call had made me more nervous because there were so many questions and I was like kind of overwhelmed. But the actual call, I would say don't stress about it if you're in that situation. Like the agent will answer pretty much all your questions probably without you even ask answering them. It's just a conversation, you can ask questions later. Honestly, kind of surreal. To work on something for so long, then talk to like an industry person who's so enthusiastic about it and who took away like exactly what you would want someone to take away from the book. It's like she really took away exactly what I would have wanted a reader to take away from the book. And I was sh stunned, like I didn't even know what to say because it was kind of just surreal to have someone have connected with my book. I even said, I don't even know what to say. She was like, that's fine, I can keep on going. I very much knew immediately that this was the right fit. Like the notes that she had for edits were, they were small, but they were 
as soon as she said them I was like yes I agree exactly that's always I think how you want to feel about notes like if it's actually a good fit for the book you kind of will know immediately you'll be like oh yeah that makes it better I pretty much knew right then that I was gonna take the offer to be honest like I I was like there's <laughs> but with querying you do have to give the other queries or people who have your book a heads up and give them a chance to make an offer which I'm kind of glad I only had one query out because it made it not a huge hassle um, so I did have to give them a heads up, to be honest, I was like, it was that really big schmancy agency, and I was like, even if they were to give me an offer, they would have to make a real case to be better than Rachel. Like, they'd really, they'd need to bring out the big guns, and I really didn't even see it happening. I just couldn't imagine a better fit. Instant I knew, I was like, oh, this is, you have, we have a deal, was, um, when she asked me, like, what else I write, and I said that I had a finished short story collection, and I was like, I know they're kind of hard to sell and she was like no I love short story collections I was like oh my god <laughs> email the other agency normally I think you're supposed to give two weeks give them two weeks to get back to you but they only had my quarry like they didn't have any pages it was just a quarry letter so I said that if they wanted further materials if they could get back to me within a week anyways they never got back to me and so I think it was like the Sunday or the Monday that I'd said that I wanted them to get back to me by um, or I think I said the Friday I wanted them to get back to me by and then on Monday um, Accepted the offer. That's the story. You'll pretty much never hear me throw around the phrase the phrase everything happens for a reason You know ooh, love, love, love. like that's not me. However, this was a case where I did feel like everything happened for a reason Thank God things didn't work out with the first agent. I was just having such a breakdown when I got when that rejection it wasn't even rejection it was literally a revised and resubmit but it was essentially a rejection because the revisions were things that i was never gonna do i didn't deal with that rejection well at all which is so funny to me because in retrospect i'm just like thank god that that was a rejection because it was not the right opportunity things fell into place they really fell into place for a reason and i was so you know feeling so low about my chances going into quarry and i was like oh it's never it's gonna be so hard blah 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 having this big breakdown about it and it all fell into place very very quickly like Life comes at you fast sometimes. This is, querying is something that I've never done before and I, you know, I started researching publishing and when I was very young because I started writing very young. So I, probably when I was like 12 I was researching how to query agents. So it's something that I've known that I was going to do at some point and I'll, I always felt it would be sooner than it was. You know, all throughout high school it's like the next book I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to query, I'm going to get an agent, you know, never happened. All throughout university, you know, going into university my goal was to have, have an agent before I graduated did not happen um because I never had the time during university to write and polish a book um so I realized that that wasn't gonna happen while I was in university so this is something that I've known that I was gonna do start querying for like over a decade and then once it actually happened it fell into place so fast like it was like such a long time to prepare for this and then the pieces really aligned um very very quickly so kind of a whirlwind but we're doing edits on the book right now so i will say to wrap this all up because my my stint in the quarry trenches was so brief literally the timeline was sent to quarry get a full request an hour later have the call two weeks later accept the offer a week later i don't think i'm really the person to talk about how to query or give much advice on querying but I would be open to doing one video about my quarry letter and looking at my quarry letter and what I think made it a strong quarry letter uh, because that was something that I think uh, definitely helped. Having a strong quarry letter is obviously super important and that's the one thing where I was like, I, I think I knew what I was doing with that one. But in terms of like strategy or how to find agents or anything, I don't think I'm really the best resource for that. I think there are better resources. So I don't think I'll be making at this stage many further videos on how to qu on querying just because I feel like I, I honestly didn't really gather the experience needed because it was so the st because the stars aligned kind of right away for me. So I don't think I'll really be making many videos at this stage on querying, but that would be one where I would be open to just just doing a video about my query letter and talking about the few things that I think helped me have a relatively painless querying journey. Hopefully that video will be coming up soon if it's something you guys are interested in. If not, if you're like, no, we would rather hear, we will get that information from people who know what they're talking about more than you. Respect. I get it. So that's all for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.